Today's episode of NCIX Tech Tips is going to be all about GeForce overclocking. Now we covered Radeon overclocking recently in the past and the procedure is not very different but I've had a lot of requests to do a GeForce overclocking guide anyway and well there's a bit of a hot topic as far as GeForce overclocking goes right now and that is the GeForce GTX 460. This is a one gig version of the card from MSI. It's their cyclone cooled edition. So if I can get the cameraman to have a look. The GeForce 460 actually costs about, well less than half the cost of a GeForce GTX 480, which is their highest end card, but with a little bit of overclocking, a little bit of tweaking, you can actually bring it within about 80% of the performance of the much higher end, much more expensive card for free. So let's have a quick look at the star of the show today. This is the N460 GTX Cyclone. So the Cyclone cooler is actually a lot like the stock cooler in some ways, so at, at kind of a deeper level. So you see this bottom part here where you've got the fins that are, uh, they're split out into two fins from one that eventually finally converges on the center. The stock cooler is much like that, but the difference is that the cyclone cooler doesn't have a shroud over it. Instead, it has two heat pipes that come out the top and move into these curved fin arrangements that go around the outside of the fan. So these carry a lot of the heat away from the GPU core, bring it out towards the edges of the fan where it can be blown on not only downward for the main heat sink down here, but it also gets a lot of incidental airflow out to the side. So that's how the Cyclone stays so cool. It's also a custom PCB card using their military class components. That means that you're going to get zero coil wine, which I actually observed with this card. I mean, what a lot of people complain about with video cards these days is that you'll get what's called coil whine, which is a high-pitched squeal when it's under 3D load. The Cyclone shows absolutely no coil whine whatsoever. Now, this is a performance card, so you do need two 6-pin PCI Express power connectors in order to run it, as well as a PCI Express 16x interface in your computer. But that's pretty much everything I wanted to show really quickly here. If you want to see a full unboxing of this, you can check out my video blog at youtube.com slash Linus Tech Tips, and I take a much closer look at it. So the first step for overclocking your GTX 460, whether it's an MSI or anything else, is to download MSI Afterburner. It works on almost all graphics cards from any manufacturer, even with ATI, NVIDIA, no matter who makes the card, MSI Afterburner is one of the best overclocking tools out there. One of the first things you're going to want to do in Afterburner is go into the settings and unlock voltage control. If you have a really good cooler on your card, such as the Cyclone cooler, you can actually increase the voltage to the GPU core and squeeze more frequency out of it that way. So we'll have a quick look at what the stock settings are. It comes slightly overclocked from the NVIDIA defaults at 725 megahertz on the core and then 1800 megahertz on the RAM, but that is double pumped, so that's actually 3.6 gigahertz on the RAM. Now what I was able to achieve with this card, it actually scores about 1600 performance marks in 3D Mark Vantage by default. But I was able to get this card stably up with a little bit of a core voltage increase up to 870 megahertz on the core and well over 4 gigahertz on the GPU. And what you want to do as soon as you're dialing in any kind of overclock or you want to test and make sure it's stable is, I mean, yeah, you want to run it with games, but you also want to try running with a benchmarking program. So in this case, I've already shown you Furmark, which takes the card and just renders an OpenGL, this complicated hairy donut thing, causes the card to heat up really hot and allows you to find out if there are any thermal limitations. Now my card gets up to about 70 degrees, the fan speed ramps up a little bit, but that's a very, very safe temperature for this card. And another really good one is 3D Mark Vantage. So you can run 3D Mark Vantage as a way to find out if the settings you're changing are actually improving your performance or not. So at stock, I was getting about 1600 3D Marks, and that's in the performance preset. So you can see the presets are right here, extreme high performance and entry, performance is the default. And after my overclock, I was able to get 19,000 3D marks. So that's a huge improvement. And that brings me to sort of one of the other points I wanted to make, is that this card costs only 250 bucks, so it's a great value. And that gets it to within 3,000 3D marks of the GTX 480 at stock speeds. Now, 
Don't kid yourself, if you're buying a mid-range card, you aren't going to get quite the same performance you'll get out of a top-of-the-line card. And with the GTX 480 overclocked, obviously you get still more performance. I was able to get up to about 25,000 3D marks with that card, but it still presents an astounding value for about 250 bucks versus, let's have a look at what an MSI GTX 480 costs. So it's a little over $500 for a GTX 480. So obviously, if you're going for the bleeding edge, you go for the higher end card. If you're not, you go for a lower end card and you overclock it, get as much performance as you can. Thank you for checking out our GeForce overclocking guide. And thank you for watching NCIX Tech Tips.